Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you all. Hope you've had a wonderful week. Before we warm up our voices, I know I need it, and go over our psalm response. Um, if you could please check your cell phones, as always, make sure those are to silent or off for mass. That's always helpful. And our psalm response this weekend is Psalm 33. Lord, let your mercy be upon us as we place our trust in you. So we're going to sing that refrain through a couple times so we can warm up our voices. Lord, let your mercy be upon us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your justice fall like rain. Let's all sing that together. Lord, let your mercy be upon us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your justice fall like rain. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, on this rainy Sunday, everyone, please stand, greet someone around you, reach across the aisle. We might have some visitors. Welcome them to Nativity. Good morning. We gather together in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Light, grace, and peace be with you all. And with your spirit. Let all say amen who reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises. Amen. Let all say amen who believe in God, loving Father of all people, who's called us to live together to build a world in unity and peace. Amen. Let all say amen who believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord, who suffered, died, and rose again for us so that we might learn to live for others and find hope in his victory over death. Amen. Let all say amen who believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. This is our faith, the faith of the church, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Come to the water, come to the water of life, it will never run dry. Come to the water, come to the water of life, it will never run dry. Oh, 
your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witness. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand. Through the mouth of all the prophets, that is, Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord.
everything you say is true righteousness in all you do the earth is full of your kindness the earth cries out for you Lord let your mercy be upon us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your justice fall like rain. Lord, let your mercy be upon us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your justice fall like rain. Your eyes on the sparrow Though we stray from the narrow And we will not be abandoned You will not be forgotten Lord, let your mercy be upon us as we place our trust in you, Lord, let your justice fall like rain. Lord, let your mercy be upon us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your justice fall like rain. of our Father. The cup has been poured. The cup has been poured. You have made us your sons and daughters. Lord, let your mercy be upon us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your justice be like rain. Lord, let your mercy be upon us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your justice fall like rain. Death is no more. Death A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you do not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not within them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord.
from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you can see that I have. As he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here for me to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The gospel of the Lord. Open Once upon a time, I was invited to a dinner party and I was seated next to a beautiful woman that I did not know. Um, she was very beautifully dressed and sitting as close to her as I was, I could, um, I could breathe in the fragrance of an expensive perfume. So at some point I turned and I introduced myself and we began to get acquainted. And inevitably, I asked the question that all Americans ask someone when they meet them for the first time. I said, what do you do? What is your profession? And she said to me, I'm a professional psychic. Oh. Really, I said. I scraped my chair a little bit closer. I said, how interesting. I said, you, you don't really look like a psychic. I mean, what's a psychic supposed to look like? You know, Where's your turban? Where's your crystal ball? I've seen movies. She laughed and she said, what do you do? And I said, well, I'm a Roman Catholic priest. And she says, well, you don't look very much like a priest either. <laughs> so I was so fascinated and I said, well, what, what does it, how do, you, how do you use your psychic gift? And she said, well, my clients come to me and she says they bring an object that they carry with them always, a piece of jewelry, their eyeglasses, a set of keys. She says, and I hold the object in my hand and I get impressions and I've learned how to interpret those impressions. So immediately I start reaching into my pockets for something for her to hold, right? I mean, isn't that what we do, right? You're sitting down, you meet someone, they say you're a mechanic and you immediately you tell, tell them about how your transmission is slipping, you know, or hairdresser. Did you bring your scissors? Cause I could use a, oh, you're a dentist. I have this molar back here. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I reach into my wallet and I find this little wallet sized photograph of my family, a, a family portrait that had been taken some years before. And I gave it to her. And this is what she did. She placed the photograph in the palm of her hand, just like this. And with her other hand and the tips of her fingers, she very lightly rubbed the surface of the picture, like so. And after a few moments, she stopped. And she began to tell me things. Things about my family, my parents, myself. Private things, personal things. Things she couldn't possibly have known. It was very apparent to me that I was in the presence of someone who had a special gift. So she says to me, would you like to know what's going to happen to the people in this photograph? And I said, no, I don't want to know. It's dangerous, you know, gazing into the future. Of equal danger is sometimes dwelling to predominantly in the past. I stand before you as someone who spent a good deal of time in my life dwelling on the past. Um, reconsidering the past, reshaping the past, brooding over the past. And I frequently ask myself the question, if I could go back in time, if I could go back to my childhood, knowing everything that I know right now in 2024, what would I change? Do you ever ask yourself that question? If you could go back to your childhood and relive your life, but know everything you know right now, what would you do differently? I can tell you right now, I would never have stopped practicing the piano. I was given piano lessons as a child and I didn't want to practice. I would love to be able to do what Matt does. I would love to be able to sit at that beautiful instrument and make music. If I could go back, I would never stop practicing. If I could go back, I'd be more patient with my parents. I'd be more grateful. I'd thank them for all the good things that they've done for me. If I could go back, I'd be less afraid. I'd be braver. But we can't go back, can we? It's not possible. But it seems to me that there is an interesting viewpoint when we look back on the past and we realize that the decisions that we made at various times in our life were made without full knowledge. We made the best decision we could at some given point in time, but as we look back from our place right now, we realize that had we had more information, had we known more, we might have made different decisions. We might not have gone to that school. We might not have made that investment. We might not have married that person. Had we known then what we know now, that when we look back, we recognize that our knowledge at any given moment is imperfect. Do you understand? Today, Peter in the Acts of the Apostles is chastising the Jews because he's saying you are responsible for bringing about the death of the Messiah through the empowerment of the leaders that you gave authority to, to your chanting for Barabbas at the moment of crucifixion, you are responsible. But he says, you did so out of ignorance. In other words, he's saying, you did not know what you were doing. You did not possess the complete knowledge of what it was that you were undertaking when you brought about the actions that led to the death of Jesus Christ. As it's true for the Jews 2,000 years ago, it's true for us, everybody, right now in 2024. Our knowledge is imperfect. I know that's difficult for some of us to hear because we have such instantaneous access to information. You know, I, I come from a generation where if I wanted to 
to look up a definition of a word, I had to go to a book called a dictionary. Okay, this voluminous text that you had to flip through, you had to have some sense of even how to spell the word. Today, if I'm reading something on my iPad and there's a word I don't understand, sometimes all I have to do is touch the screen and boom, the definition appears. I don't even have to go to a dictionary app. I just touch the screen. If I want to know where Bolivia was, I had to go find an atlas. I had to dig it out. I had to flip through it until I could find where that country was. Today, I just touch my phone. All I have to do is touch the phone and instantaneously, a world map comes up. And because information is so dynamically available to us, it can create the illusion within us that we possess all knowledge. But that's not true. At any given moment in our journey, our knowledge is imperfect. On a fairly regular basis, I'll have a young teenager come to see me, somebody who's maybe 13, 14, 15 years of age. So they've come to the decision at this point in their life that they don't believe in God and they don't want to go to church and they don't believe in the sacraments and they're, they're wanting to disengage, right? So their parents send them to see me, all right? So here I am sitting with this teenager and I try to begin to sort of set things up, spirituality, and maybe I'll sort of begin to introduce the Christian story. And inevitably, this child will say to me, oh, I know all that. I've had religion class, they say. I know everything. I know all about the life and the death and resurrection. I know about the sacraments. I know it all. You don't have to tell me. I know everything. And I think to myself in that moment, you do? <laughs> I have two graduate level theological degrees. I've been preaching the scriptures for 35 years. I'm 65 years old and I don't know it all. But you, at 14 years of age, you possess the wisdom of the world on your shoulders. You can, at this juncture in your life, determine that you no longer need any of this, nor do you need it now, or will you ever need it in the future? How can that be? Do, do you see everybody that in that mentality there is an arrogance and God despises arrogance. God loves humility and when we acknowledge that we do not know everything and that our knowledge is imperfect, that's an act of humility. So here's what I suggest. The next time you have to make a decision, great or small, stop, take a breath, and say to God, I ask you, God, to guide me and direct me in the decision that I must make today because my knowledge is imperfect, but your knowledge is infinite and eternal and full of wisdom. So I trust you, God, to lead me and to guide me in the decision that I must make today and tomorrow and the day after that. And then step back and watch what happens. And that's all you need to know.
We pray that as a people of God gathered as one in the church, we might hear and keep the words of Jesus, that we might be open to his presence in the faces of our loved ones and in the eyes of strangers we meet, that we might not judge or condemn or be suspicious, but simply love better. We pray to the Lord. That peace and reconciliation and humanitarian repair might come to the devastated communities in Gaza. We pray to the Lord. For an end to gun violence on our streets and in our schools, we pray to the Lord. As a Catholic community, we pray for our newest members and all those who receive the sacraments during the Easter season, that this might continue to be a time of great wonder for them. We pray to the Lord. For the sick, the suffering, the dying, and for all those in need of God's grace and healing, we say their names aloud at this time. John. that through the healing power of the Holy Spirit, may all those who are ill be brought to the fullness of health and well-being. We pray to the Lord. For the repose of the souls of Hilda Farini, Maria Luisa Alvarado, Angela Mortabiro, and all those who have died, may they rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord God, as we grow in wisdom and understanding, we recognize that at any given moment, our knowledge is imperfect. So we look to you to guide us, to lead us, to direct our actions and our thoughts so that we might find our way to that place of peace, of abundance, of right judgment through Christ our Lord. Amen. As our gifts are prepared for the altar, let's sing together, Rise Up With Him. Oh, 
proclaim your word for ages all to come. Hallelujah. Sing a new song. Glory to our God of everlasting life. And we'll sisters and brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God our almighty father may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church receive O Lord we pray these offerings of your exultant church and as you have given her cause for such great gladness grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord amen the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For this death is our ransom from death. And in this rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. It is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we discern and drink this cup, we proclaim in your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of this death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Danny, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. May the peace of the Lord be with all of you. Thank you. Let us share with one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. If you are a guest in the Catholic Church or if there's any other reason you won't be receiving communion this morning, we'd like to invite you to come forward with us and receive a blessing. And the way that we do that is to ask you to cross your hands over your heart and that will be a sign to receive a blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and to that reply, amen. And let's continue in our worship together by singing Supper of the Lamb. Let 
Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. I mentioned in my homily how much I, I tend to dwell on the past. I think a lot about the pandemic and 
And, and the whole experiences that we had during that time, you may recall that uh, at one point we, we established the pavilion and we would have mass out there on Saturday evenings at four o'clock and, uh, and then on Sunday mornings at 11. And gradually, many of you said, well, we missed that eight o'clock mass. There's some of us that we like to get up. We like to go to mass first thing in the morning. So, so we reinstated the eight o'clock mass. And, and, uh, and it's in general, it's usually our lightest in terms of our attendance here. But I'm, I'm happy to have the mass here at eight o'clock. But, but I do need, um, I need help. I need some help. So you can see today that um, I didn't have a server. And that's happening more and more frequently here at the eight o'clock mass. So I, I want you to know, everybody, that I can't do it all. Okay, I need some help. I need some help. So I'm hoping that some of you might consider the possibility of being trained to be a server and, and help to serve at mass because it's an important ministry, just as the ushering is, just as the lecturing is. It's a part of the whole composition of the liturgy and, uh, and we need your help. So um, give that some prayerful thought and uh, see if, if, uh, if you might be called to help in that way because I could use your assistance. Some years ago, I talked about the fact that we, um, we were living in a very extraordinary time in the history of the Roman Catholic Church. We have a pope who's interested in what you think, and what you think and how you feel is, is influencing him in terms of how he wants the church to respond to the modern world. So he's conducting this experience called the Synod, where he's bringing all these different people together, and they're discussing the various different issues surrounding the Catholic Church today, and making a determination about how the church is gonna be guided in the future. So there were questions that we were given, and we went through a very elaborate process where we got a bunch of people trained here. We had this interview process. Some of you may remember, we lured you into the hall, with coffee and donuts, and we interviewed you. We had these questions, we interviewed you. That information was compiled. It was sent to the Diocese of Monterey. Interesting side note, that the input that we gave was very consistent with the other parishes in our diocese. That was called together and sent to Rome. A representation from the Tivi of Our Lady, from the Diocese of Monterey, was sent to Rome to be a part of the Synod. Now, as the Synod is continuing, there are, there are two more questions that they want us to ask. Uh, they're very, very complicated questions. They needed Father Matt Pennington to help them with this, everybody. So we put them in the bulletin, but here they are. Here's one. There's just two of them. Where have I seen or experienced successes and distresses within the church's structures, organization, leadership life that encourage or hinder the mission? Okay. The second question is, how can the structures and organization of the church help all the baptized to respond to the call to proclaim the gospel and to live as a community of love and mercy in Christ? Just say yes. Okay. So, <laughs> it's, it, there are such involved questions. Here's the thing, everybody. If you would like to have your voice heard, then we have these questions at the bulletin. There's a link on our website. Send in your responses. They're going to be gathered, and we will send them into the Diocese of Monterey. And we need to do so right away. It was interesting. Um, the powers that be contacted us and said, oh, we'd like to have this. Like, I think they wanted it like the week before Holy Week. And all of us pastors said, no, that's not possible. So, um, so they are wanting it as soon as possible. So take a look at the bulletin, see if you have a response that you'd like to make, send it in to us and we'll pass it on to the, to the diocese. Speaking of the diocese, every year, uh, Bishop Danny asks us to support the ministries of the Diocese of Monterey with the annual ministries appeal. And the way that this works is that every parish is given a financial goal and everything we collect over that goal, we get to keep for our ministries here in the parish. So our goal this year is uh, just shy of 37,000. It's 36.5. And so we're going to be sending out pledge envelopes to all of you with a brochure from the diocese and a letter from the bishop as well. And I I know that he's so grateful for your support, as, as am I as well, um, as, we, as we continue to support the diocese and the bishop's work here in the Diocese of Monterey. Um, on May 3rd, we're going to be having a field trip for the first Friday to uh, the Newman Center. Some of you may not know this, but for a long time, the Newman Center met here for their Sunday evening masses. Eventually, they built a chapel on the campus at Cal Poly, and... Uh, 
it's a, we're going to do a field trip and have a tour out there. The problem is there's no parking. So we're going to have to get some vans to escort us, and we can only take 26 people. So if you'd like to go on the 3rd of May, that's going to be first thing in the morning, you can RSVP to Joan Riley, and her information is in the bulletin, and she'll get that all set up for you. We have hospitality for you, everybody, so it's kind of rainy and cold outside. Come in and have something to eat and drink before you head off on your busy Sunday. Let's stand and conclude our prayer. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration has ended. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord and one another. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, <laughs> alleluia. Thank you.